So I get lots of requests for tunes for this Soloing on Tunes series, and one of the most requested tunes I have for lessons is Misty. So when I recently had my rhythm section put together some play-along tracks, um, Misty was right at the top of the list. And let me tell you, they really put together a beautiful play-along track, so I think you're going to enjoy working with this play-along track in the lesson. And of course, we're going to do a lot of I play, you play stuff, so uh, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun playing with this track. Now. I chose the tune Misty also, you know, it's been requested, but also uh, we haven't done a ballad yet in this series, so I wanted to make sure we got a ballad, and a lot of these chordal movements that are found in Misty are common, so I wanted to make sure to address those. Now, I formatted this lesson a little differently than I've done some of the other soloing on tunes lessons, so you'll notice that rather than one long video, I've put four shorter instructional videos with the lesson. That way, you can cross-reference between um, various topics a little easier. You, if you find something in video one, for instance, that you decide you want to revisit later, well, it should be easy to just click on video one and check that out, or video two, whatever. Now, uh, the videos will be organized like this. Video one will cover the chord progression. We'll cover um, some observations about the form, the key, obviously, those sorts of things. But some other things about the chord movements that I want to want you to take notice of we'll cover. Video 2 will get into the basics of the chord changes, you know the arpeggios, the scales, the chords are, that are construct the scales that the chords are constructed from, those sorts of things. So uh, it just covers all the basics of the chord progression. Video 3 will get into more phrasing using a lot of these basics that we've talked about. So of course there'll be a lot of I play, you play in video 3. And then in video 4 we'll get into some more advanced concepts. Now, this way, uh, you don't have to work on the whole lesson at once if you want to work on the whole lesson. It's important to understand how the chords relate to each other in chord progressions. This helps in creating solo lines that make good logical sense in your phrases so that you're seeing, hearing, and ultimately phrasing over the progression, not just chord to chord. Other benefits to understanding chord progressions include developing the ability to recognize common chord movements and tonal shifts within a specific chord progression. You also learn to recognize similar chordal movements between tunes. I'll show you an example of this momentarily. Now, let's perform a brief analysis of the A section. I'll discuss the tenor sax key, but written examples are provided for alto sax and concert pitch instruments, so it be, should be easy for you to translate my lingo between keys. In the example, I've numbered the F major scale since we're in the key of F. I've also numbered the F major and B flat major chords in the progression as the 1 and 4 chords. For your first real practice exercise, I would suggest going through the scales and the arpeggios that each of the chords are constructed from. Now in the written lesson, I've included the scales and arpeggios but I've, uh, for, for the A and the B section, but I've organized them in their 2-5-1 combinations that they're found in the lesson, so I haven't really organized them in the sequence 
that you'll encounter them in the in the chord progression. Instead, I've organized them by the tonality. So if you look um, in the in the written portion of the lesson, and you can see here on your screen, the first um, set of chords I've included is the uh, two five one in F major for tenor sax, two five one in C major for alto sax. So that's G minor seven for tenor, C seven followed by F7, and you can see that all of these scales have the same key signature. They're all one flat. This brings me to another thing. I often get questioned by students um, about how I'm able to play across the time. So rather than always playing beat to beat, maybe I'll play from uh, phrase to phrase or what I call point to point. And uh, again, that comes with having the freedom with the time and having the, the movement of the chords, the time, everything is still deep enough that I have a good sense of when the chords are changing and when I'm arriving at different chords. Listen as I play with the kind of point to point type of feel over the first few bars of the progression with the play along track.